So it's all dependent on your level of fitness and the level of the metabolism of your system. Now we know that exercise is disease prevention. The more muscle you have, the more neurons you have, the better your recovery will be from having any type of injury to your central nervous system. So myokines can, and exerkines, can help you with obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular issues, and even cancer. Welcome to My Pods Podcast. I'm Dr. Joe Schneider, and after 35 years as a functional neurologist, a personal journey through stroke recovery and helping thousands of patients, I'm here to share breakthrough solutions for POTS and neurological wellness. From getting out of bed in the morning to rebuilding your nervous system, this is your guide to understanding and overcoming neurological challenges. Let's begin this journey to recovery together. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, beginning of September, uh, everybody was going back to school, right? And um, so we're getting a lot of calls from individuals who've had concussion, individuals that have POTS, especially um, younger kids in high school, grammar school, and also college that have um, these issues, right? Or a combination of the issues. Um, right now, we're finding it, it always comes with combinations of issues. Traumatic brain injury, long COVID, resulting in brain injury, nor inflammation that causes us to have issues. Now, we've talked about all the comorbidities that come along with, with dysautonomia or POTS. It's chronic fatigue, headache pain, body pain, digestive issues for our females, it uh, affects their cycle. Could be, and it doesn't have to be all the combinations, um, EDS, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, uh, mast cell activation syndrome. Um, so we're getting patients that have so much a combination of issues, but what we're getting with chronic fatigue is muscle weakness. Muscle weakness, right? So I would say that the largest organ in your body is your muscle system, your musculoskeletal system, because we, we can't do anything unless we can move. If we can't move, then we can't activate that system. And that system is responsible for activation in so many other ways. So muscles are an organ an organ system. Um, I never really recognized that. And um, it's a fantastic organ system that communicates not only with the nervous system, but many other organ systems. So the muscles secrete myokines. They're called myo muscle kinds, and they secrete exerkines, E-X-E-R-K-I-N-E-S. You can look it up or even put it in in your AI programs, and it'll give you a great explanation for all these interconnections. So skeletal muscles produce hundreds of myokines. They act as an endocrine and exocrine integration of signaling within the body that helps your, your body function at a higher level, higher performance level. So... They talk to your brain, your adipose tissue, your bone, your liver, your gut, your pancreas, your vascular beds, and your skin. So if you want to look younger, exercise. All right. Now, some of the key myokines have to do with immunity, interleukin-6 or brain-derived neurotrophic factors, myostatin, which helps to thin the blood, and fibroblast growth factors that uh, help improve collagen and collagen function and strengthening within the body. 
Now, we all know that brain-derived neurotrophic factors communicate in the brain so that when you exercise a muscle, and when a muscle is active and exercising, contracting and relaxing, these brain-derived neurotrophic factors help stabilize your brain. They help stabilize your brain and grow neurons, grow interconnections within the brain to plasticize it in a, in a great way. And we also know that when you exercise, you affect an area of the brain called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is responsible for short-term memory, sequential memory and short-term memory. So the areas of memory are affected by exercise. So regular exercise over several months can double the size of the big campus. It gets bigger. It gets bigger because when you exercise muscle, you can get improvements in not only memory, but also cognitive function. And um, I think in, in, in past podcasts and also um, past blogs that I've come up with, we talked about things like grip strength, grip strength, walking fast for six minutes, doing different what we call neurodrive exercises because exercise will stimulate those myokines to signal the brain to function better. So, for example, um, cross-country ru runners. Cross-country runners learn to pace themselves, right? And they're using their mind to get the feel of a tempo and pace while they're running. They learn to um, be on uneven surfaces. They learn to go up hills, go down hills, and things like that. So uh, exercise can be a pretty heavy inducer of cognitive function through the neurodrive system and the myokines. So exercise is very, very important for that. And so when we say that when you exercise, you have this inner organ connection, right? So exercise, when muscle pulls on bone, it stimulates the electrical activity of bone, which strengthen bone. So we know that when we, when we exercise, we strengthen bone. We know that when we exercise, we stimulate the immune system because we'll have certain muscles, certain tissues that uh, have a greater lactic acid buildup, and we need to get rid of lactic acid. Uh, we need to get rid of debris through the lymph system that can cause you to have soreness or issues like that. Um, so muscle can mediate pain. So the more muscle activity we have, we can stimulate the body to, to stimulate enkephalins or endo endorphins. And those endorphins can actually cause you to have this kind of high that you would normally get from medication or drugs, but an endorphin high for marathon runners or people that do long distance biking and stuff like that. So as you exercise, your body will develop chemicals, muscle fibers, and brain fibers, and will stimulate different releases of local pain relief called enkephalins and overall pain called endorphins, right? Beautiful system of exercise. Exercise also stimulates peptides, microRNA, messenger RNA, and mitochondrial DNA. So it actually will strengthen your nucleus and your messenger RNA for functions of creating chemical uh, chemicals from your cell, which are chemical factories. Beautiful stuff, really beautiful stuff. Uh, myokines also influence glucose metabolism, um, lipid metabolism, insulin sensitivity, and energy expenditure. So the whole metabolism of creating energy through glucose and, and the pancreas are all stimulated through exercise. 
So when you exercise, you have this multi-system effect on the body that's so important, especially with people with dysautonomia. The people who have an ex a history of exercise will usually respond better and more quickly than patients that don't, okay? So part of our program is to get people to get back to exercise as soon as possible, slowly at first, and then as the system can tolerate more, it will go on. So it's like training for a marathon. You're not going to go out and run 26 miles. If you've never done a marathon before, you know you'll go out and you'll run a mile if you can, or walk a mile if you can. So it's all dependent on your level of fitness and the level of the metabolism of your system. Now, we know that exercise is disease prevention. The more muscle you have, the more neurons you have, the better your recovery will be from having any type of injury to your central nervous system. So myokines can, and exerkines, can help you with obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular issues, and even cancer. So what are we saying? So we have this beautiful organ system in our body that's regulated peripherally through the uh, peripheral nervous system in the spine. It's regulated centrally with the brain stem, the subcortex, and the cortex. So if we have all these issues that are going on between the muscle and the brain, then it's important for our patients to start as they get better and are able to tolerate exercise um, to get in the modes for it. Now, exercise needs energy. So a good diet is very, very important. You can't be eating junk food. You gotta have a good diet. Now, we recommend in the office the ketogenic diet because the ketogenic diet helps to clean the brain better. It helps to uh, energize the brain without any oxidant activity, all right? And so the ketogenic diet will help you lose weight and function at a higher level, especially with brain injury, either from a trauma, from covid from Lyme disease, from toxic exposure, and so forth. So exercise, muscle size, and metabolism, and brain health all work together. So if you know anyone that needs help with POTS or any type of brain injury, then the Hope Brain and Body Recovery Center is the place to go. And also the Hope Regeneration Center, our new center in which we can use uh, different uh, IVs, uh, different um, stem cell and Morton's jelly to help to increase response from injury. So give us a call, 610-544-9800. We're here to help you. Call up, schedule a consult. We'll tell you what we can do, how we can do it, and why we can do it. And uh, it'll be a pleasure speaking with you and trying to find solutions for your particular problem. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us on My Pots Podcast. If you're looking for more support, visit us at hopebraincenter.com or follow our journey on TikTok where we share daily insights and inspiration. Remember, healing is possible. I'm living proof. I'm Dr. Joseph Schneider, and I'll see you next time as we continue exploring paths to recovery.